I can change the script for any of us. Whatever it takes for any of y'all, just bring it up out the room. I'm just show sure with you. I ain't mad at you. And I'm beloved for you. Do you think, boy? Yeah. All the homies that I ain't talking to. Right? Ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to send this one out to y'all. Know what I mean? The late. Because I ain't mad at you. And great. I heard y'all saying that's how this should be. Tupac, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to be in my background because I ain't mad at none of y'all, even though it may appear that way from time to time. I understand that ignorance is bliss. It has nothing to do with eight senses, six senses, or a hundred senses. Ignorance is bliss. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is the reason why we did the two-hour video, but that video led into being two hours because that writ of certiorari petition see at first i was not reading it correctly because i was skimming through it i thought it was actually an order from this from the supreme court only to find out after reading the whole thing that it was a motion from the young man mr wilson jr to the supreme court of the united states 2018 i am interested to find out what happened in that case but i am also interested if you all will pay attention to the argument and pay attention to my critique of the arguments, okay, because of what the issues are. Now, many of you, you hear me talking about law because I have, I need you guys to understand there was an idiot who claimed to be an attorney, but his wording and the way he wrote his junk lets me know he wasn't an attorney because attorneys don't write that way under any circumstances. Let me explain something to all of you. I do foundational law. I don't care what the some court said yesterday. I don't care what some judge ruled. First of all, the courts have no authority to rule over anyone, citizen or not. There is nothing in the Constitution which allows any member of government to rule over anyone. So their rulings, that's not the law. The law does not allow them to rule. Don't take my word for it. Go back and look at their delegation of authority. You see, because they have limited power, they can't rule. Well, they have limited rule. No such thing. The kings of the United States, the queens of the United States are the people. The servant can't rule over the king. Unless you're Israel and you've got the Babylonians surrounding you and putting up stage ramparts and, and, and you, you ask the bubble tree to rule over you. By the way, go back and read, because that's exactly what the prophecy was, that even a group of women would go to the lowliest man and ask him to be the leader over all of them, because they're in sore straits. I'm not in sore straits that I'm going to ask any ignorant mother human being to rule over me. I will never allow a human to rule over me. Like I said, I could not have lived through slavery. It is impossible with my personality. That's why I could not have been born during any other period of time than this one. This one. All right. Let's talk, shall we? This particular document by Mary Weisner. This particular document. United States Code, Prima Facie Evidence, and Positive Law. Please understand. What you guys don't get, those of you who've gone over stuff like this, Prima facie, there's no such thing as prima facie evidence. That is some junk that they created along with presumption of law. There's no such thing. Evidence is evidence. Evidence is based on facts. Evidence could never be based on supposition. I suppose supposition. Oh, I, I can imagine that. Oh, yeah, that's plausible. There is no such thing in law as plausibility. These are rules that they created over time. However, pay attention, rules that they created over time. Seventh Amendment holds that the rules of the court are common law rules. Pay attention, because common law rules. Because that's what the people limited. If you don't believe me, Tupac, everyone. Uh, if you don't believe me, let me do this.
Now, I just put the United States Constitution as supreme law of the land. Hold on, so that y'all get it. Supremacy Clause, the Constitution of the United States, Article 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, Clause 2, establishes that the Constitution, now hold on, the, this didn't establish that the Constitution, pay attention, this did not establish that the Constitution was supreme law of the land, and federal laws made pursuant to it, no federal law is made pursuant to the Constitution, and treaties made under the authority of the Constitution, constitutes supreme law of the land, thus takes priority over any conflicting state laws or any conflicting statute. Statutes are not laws. That's why the young man, Mr. Casey Davis, could say anytime the court's enforcing statute, they're possessive of no judicial power. Judicial power comes from the Constitution. You step outside the Constitution, you step outside your authority. You have no authority at that point. Don't take my word for it understand the law now they say federal laws ladies and gentlemen there's no such thing in the constitution as federal laws watch this we're gonna put this in quote c-o-n-g-r-e-f-s-s-h-a-l-l -L. mandatory shall always means mandatory we're gonna do right here see where it says congress shall make no law that includes statutory law you don't believe me? We're going to put that in quotes because we don't want nothing else other than the yang, yang, yin, yang. Hey, tell my baby, you know, she's going to come home. You know what I'm saying? Hey, this is uh, Luther, and he's saying, tell my baby comes home. And you know this song right here? Don't matter where you're from, can take it back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hold on. You must understand, Congress shall make no law respecting these, pay attention, common law rights. See, the right to practice religion is a common law right. The right to freedom of speech is a common law right. The right to practicing and exercising your religious rights is a common law right. The right to the freedom of the press and the right to the being able to peacefully assemble is a common law right the right to say hey government we put you in power i need you to correct this stupid that's going on because this ain't got no business going on that's a common law right the right to be free from unlawful search seizure and to have your possessions in your power is a common law right this is where it said respecting not the establishment of religion only because it says or 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 and okay all of these things are common law rights and the second third fourth fifth sixth seven eight ninth and tenth amendment went ahead and set forth the further limitations on government shall make no is a limitation so when they make statutes 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 and they say that that's law where's the proof see i don't worry it don't matter where my baby is you know she doesn't leave me without nothing she leaves me without everything all right ladies and gentlemen we're gonna cover this document in bits and pieces because y'all need to have this understanding now, I need you guys to understand. Stop using U.S. code. I, I've been saying it for years. Yes, yes, yes. You use U.S. codes in your documents, ladies and gentlemen. I only use U.S. codes to, and that's why our documents always say, to the extent so as to bring forth whatever point we're trying to bring forth. But we're not relying on any U.S. code. That's why we challenge your jurisdiction. Okay. This will tell you that the statutes at large is the official laws of the United States. That is a lie. Statute at large is not the official laws of the United States. Hold on now. Can't wait, can't wait, y'all. We already went over the supreme law in the United States is said to be the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, not the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th Amendment. The 13th Amendment secured for you not a single right 
the right to be free of involuntary servitude because it shall not be permitted unless for the punishment of a crime? That's not a right, people. Okay? The fact that the 14th Amendment identifies what a United States citizen is, that's not a right. Do you guys understand that? That That's not a right. Those are privileges because now they're giving you permission. Go back and look at the first 10 amendments. None of those amendments give you permission. It's not a limited constitution when you are concerned. When you are involved, it's a limit on government because the people are setting the limits. Now, remember, it's a common law doctrine, so that's why you don't get to sit up there and violate somebody's rights. All right, I got to pause y'all for just a second. Hold on now. I'll be right back. Got to go do something. Okay, move some pages around, trying to get you guys back in on the groove. Because we're going to talk about the ghetto. Because we need y'all to understand that George is going to tell y'all about what the ghetto is and what the ghetto is not. There you go, George. George Benson, everybody. My brother, my brother, my brother. My people. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and finish talking about this. Now, I'm not here to tell you what is law and what is not law. That's not my job. I'm going to let them tell you. Now, when we told you that we should not even be considering the U.S. codes, let me go ahead and explain to you guys why with my touching my screen. Get your hands off my screen. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the U.S. code, when we examine the U.S. code, I need you guys to understand something about the U.S. code. I want you guys to, we're going to do a search, control F, and we're going to do... S-I-X-H-U-N-D-E-R-D. 600 errors. Oh, I, it's D-R-E-D. Sorry. Uh, 600 errors. 600. Hold on. Get rid of that E. Get out of there. And get, put the E where it belongs. Okay. 600 errors. You see, in 1924, the United States Senate Committee commissioned the revising of the United States Code. Now, it originally started in uh, 1921, but by 1924, they were serious about it, and they, you know how <laughs> they can't stop writing codes and making these restrictions and putting this loophole and that loophole in the law? Well, there's so many laws, ladies and gentlemen, that taking, at that time, they, there were no computers to where they could just copy and paste, so what they had to do is they had to retype it. But you know what happens when you retype something? Just like when you sit up there and are a scribe, like in the ancient times where they had to translate or transpose scripture to another parchment. Well, there were mistakes. That's why you had the head scribes who were supposed to review and look for those mistakes. If you made too many mistakes, you weren't allowed to transcribe anything anymore. That's why you hear when people like Ezra, yes, the Bible writer Ezra, when you hear of Ezra, who I believe is uh, credited with writing the book of Chronicles and the book of Ezra, when you hear of Ezra, he's a scribe. He was a transcriber. He literally, his job was to make sure that there was a copy of the record from Moses on down, because these were their laws, okay? Well, what happens, that didn't change in the 20th century. So Congress says, hey, we need a revision, okay? We got these statutes at large. And we have them all in one place, but no, we don't want it like that. We want it to be a little bit more complicated, so we're going to write some more laws, and we're going to call them revised statutes. Revised laws of the United States. Those are not laws, ladies and gentlemen. They never were. No, I'll prove it to you. Look, it says, despite great care that had been exercised and the unquestionable ability unquestionable that means it can't be questioned their ability 
of the revisers, the Senate committee discovered 600 errors. Now, it was probably more than 600, but I don't know when you get to 600, I mean, who's counting? Okay? 600 errors in the United States Code as of 1924. I'm sorry, where's the proof that they corrected those errors? Now, let's, let's do this. Because if, as, as you noticed, when I was reading that yesterday, and I was believing that the United States Supreme Court had wrote that, I was noticing the errors, and that didn't make any sense, because they painstakingly go over every order, every motion, every word is there for a reason. The same thing with the Constitution. When the people put the Constitution together, they made sure of every word. That's why you don't have different translations of the Constitution. Pay me. Pay, 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 pay attention to me, y'all. I want you guys to know something. The Constitution was put together in the late 1700s or the 18th century. When the Constitution was put together, do you notice that there are no vows, no wherefores, no theys? Why is that? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Declaration of Independence doesn't have any vows, no wherefores, no they. Why is that? Because language changes every 20 to 30 years of a particular culture. Words evolve. People shorten words, extend words, add to words, create new words. And so those individuals who want to rely on something like 16th century English, to understand something in modern English, knock yourselves out. We're going to get back to this, okay? It says, many of them were without, without merit. Many of what were without merit? And some of them were even frivolous. The mistakes. The mistakes. They said that the mistakes were without merit. So is it possible that they intentionally made these mistakes to invalidate their own code? Not, I'm, I'm not saying that's what they did. I ask, is it possible? Because that's my argument. I ain't got to prove that they made these mistakes. They hired these unquestionable advisors who had unquestionable abilities. That's why they were chosen. These were law professors. Okay? These were learned individuals. These were students of the law. So why? Let me say that again. Why did they make so many mistakes? 600 errors, at least. It says more than half of those mistakes were merely typographical errors, such as misspelled words, errors in figures, and other oversights of proofreaders. So they had proofreaders. So that lets me know that the mistakes were intentional because that's too many errors for everybody to have missed. How do all of these individuals miss all 600 errors? I put contracts up on the internet. Well, we used to. I don't do it anymore. But I put them up there with misspelled words on purpose. And you know what? A lot of people missed it. But not everybody. Not everybody. A lot of people caught those errors and brought it to our attention. And I had to do videos saying, hey, did that on purpose because those are your agreements. You're supposed to read them. You're supposed to make sure it says what it's supposed to say. But because we knew some of you weren't going to do that, we put the clause in there that any segment of this that has any misspelled words or anything that is said to be inadmissible or uh, impermissible does not invalidate any other provision. This document is to be perceived and construed contextually in all its aspects. That's why we have certain comments in our documents like that, because we knew some of you would not do that. Pay attention. They can't do that with the law. But they do it all the time. That's right. Because they're operating under statute. See, the law cannot be written in such a way that there are mistakes. Because Congress is put there as students of law to get it right because the people are relying on those laws. And if you rely on those laws to your injury, then you are precluded from suffering consequences as a result of your reliance on those stupid laws. Now, 
Other criticisms refer to statutes found in the revised statutes of 1874 to 1878 but omitted in the present compilation. Now, why did they omit that? For example, it is said that section 18 and 19 of the revised statutes were not included in the bill. Why? Because they dealt with the election. Remember, this is the same time period for which the so-called original 13th Amendment was gotten rid of. Okay? Anyway, was not included in the bill. It is the writer's absolute inexplicable uh wait it is to the writer absolutely inexplicable why well i said inexplicable but we can say inexplainable because that's that sounds better why such a statement would be made in the first instance why would you state that you omitted that from the revised code why is that you can't omit laws it is the writer's absolutely inexplicable to the writer absolutely inexplicable why such a statement should be made it is true that those sections are not included in the bill so why say they're omitted it is also true that they were intentionally omitted like i said this was in, done on purpose those sections dealt with the law relating to elections of the united states senators by the respective legislatures of the respective states they were a part of the law done away with by the adoption of the 17th Amendment, or the so-called federal constitution. There's no such thing as a federal constitution. It is the United States Constitution. You don't get me? Go back and read it. It says right there, United States Constitution does not say anything about federal. It doesn't say anything in the Constitution about a federal government. You only find that stuff later when Congress starts adding to it. Because that's what man does. Man adds to everything they come in contact with. Now, ladies and gentlemen, many of y'all need to understand this is called gratitude. By earth and wind and fire, the elements, okay? Earth, wind, and fire. Uh, by the way, it is 97 degrees. It is not even 11 o'clock. 97 degrees! Okay, let me go ahead and continue so that... Uh, <laughs> anyway, why any person would cite such omissions and criticism of the bill, this writer is unable to understand. No, we understand why they would cite such omissions because several Congress members, this bill did not pass um, unanimously. This bill had a lot of opposition. Okay? Now, hold on. As long as that, as long as they found there were 600 errors. Do you know that there was never any effort to correct those errors after they found those 600 errors? What they, the reason why they couldn't correct those 600 errors because it would have taken years. Because they would have had to go over the whole thing again and look for more errors. They would have had to correct those errors, go back to the original, and make sure. No, this was done on purpose. As you're seeing right here, these are the uh, individuals who... You have the United States Code statutes annotated. So USCA, that's what that stands for, USCA. Now this one says United States compiled statutes and, 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 and amputated, okay? Then you have the United States Code services. Then you have the United States Code. These are all different codes, people. They don't all say the same thing. They do not all agree. There is a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, this song right here is Robert Bookings and Stephanie Mills. And you're singing the song, Where is the Love? And this song has special meaning to me. This was the song that was playing the day my best friend died. Like I said, we have a constant wind. So at 97 degrees, it feels about 82. So it doesn't feel like it's 97. But that thermometer over there says 97. Oh, I'm sorry. That's inside because my solar is not hooked up. So I can't turn on the air conditioning. 
Well, I could turn on the generator to turn on the air conditioning, but gas is $4.50 a gallon. Lord, have mercy. Okay, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, yes, I know, I know. Sometimes I do a little rendition of Lord, Chris Rock, but not on purpose, okay? It's just what I've been doing for years. He just copied me, okay, because he needed some new material. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn down my little Robert Bookins. Many of you guys probably don't know who Robert Bookins is. Uh, do a little bit of research and go listen to Robert, okay? Robert got some skills, y'all. That's why he's singing with Stephanie Mills. Or, excuse me, this is Robert Bookings and Stephanie Mills. Bookings, I-N-S. Robert Bookings and Stephanie Mills. This is not Stephanie Mills featuring Robert Bookings. This is Robert Bookings featuring Stephanie Mills. Okay, he's the headliner in this remake. Okay? Originally done by Roberta Flack and Donnie Hathaway. Change of heart. When I told you guys my best friend died and I, for a split second, thought of driving my car off the side of a bridge, this was the song that was playing in the background. Okay? And what I can... Well, this is a song playing in the background when I heard the news, when I got in my car to drive over to the house. His house was 10 minutes away. I got there in less than four. Did not get stopped at a single red light. All the lights were green. Had Did not have to swerve through traffic to get around anybody. Straight there, even to the point where I'm hitting my brakes and my tires are leaving skid marks on the ground in front of his house. So that's how... Even though I didn't know at the time that he had died, I just got a message that didn't sound right. And it caused me concern to break my neck to get over there. So, nope, didn't put anybody's life in danger. But, yeah, it would have been that way if I had, after I'd heard the news. Before I heard the news, I wasn't going to uh, do anything stupid because I didn't know what was going on. But afterwards, yeah, it was that much of a hit i was talking to the young man i told you guys in the other video who's incarcerated mr big lou and while he was in jail earlier this year his daughter had a grand mal seizure and never recovered and died as a result and he had to hear that news now remember he's been incarcerated since for 22 years his daughter was 26 years old. So he hasn't seen his... Well, he's seen her, but he hasn't seen her seen her. He hasn't been able to be around her because for the last four years, he's been in a facility where they will not permit him family visits. So he had to hear that news. So I mentioned all of this to let you know that when I'm playing these songs in the background, when I tell you it's for my benefit and not yours, you really are not getting it if you haven't gotten that. Now, this is my girl Gladys Knight, and she's singing next time. Now, somebody told me, he says, hey, could you talk up? You were playing Gladys Knight the other day, and, and, and I can't even hear what you were saying. All I can hear was Gladys Knight. Then you should be grateful that all you could hear was Gladys Knight. Shoot, that's the reason that it's playing is because I want you to hear it. Mother... Okay. No, ladies and gentlemen, if it gets to the point where I'm talking and you can't really hear my voice, it's because I'm tired. That's a sign of me being exhausted is when you really can't hear me. You better believe it because, boy, I'm telling you, when you want people to hear you, they can hear you. But when, when we can't hear you, must something must be wrong because you just talk way too much. much to, uh, you got to shut up before you end up putting your foot in your... Go on and sit. No, go on over there and sit down before you... Go sit down before you get in trouble. I apologize. He he knows better than doing stuff like that. No, I don't want to hear it. I, I apologize, y'all. We're going to get back to this right here, okay? And uh, as Jan, I mean, not Janet, as my girl Gladys is saying, next time, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, to allow time, pay attention. Told you it was going to take time to allow time to discover and correct errors 
the Senate Select Committee on Revision of the Laws proposed a twilight zone period during which the statutes would not be repealed and the code would not be positive law. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll find it in the book, Dawn, 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 and Fiddler, Fiddler, Fiddler. Okay? I don't know exactly what book this is. I just know it's the Dwan and Fiddler Super Notes. Okay? But I would go and see if you can find a copy of this. 1926. Now, it is part of the Congressional Records. Okay? Let's do that. Let's see if we can go find this right here. Why hell? Why hell? Let's do that. Well, I don't want to do the 1926 because that might that might uh, limit our search if I put a year in. It's with my life. Dude. Hey, every time you come around, giving any excuses while you're running all over town. Okay, look at this. Senate 1926 content. Uh, history of bills and resolutions. I don't want the history, though. I want the actual text. So what do we do? T-E-X-T. -E because I'm not new to this looking up things, research stuff. Okay? Now, normally I would go to archive.org to get stuff like this, but let's see. Outside looking in. I'll be loving you again next time baby next time ain't the one you okay ladies and gentlemen this is Gladys Knight and she's singing on an album we gotta wait for this to pull up so while it's pulling up I'm gonna keep talking this is Gladys Knight and she's singing from the album a song for you I mean just for you sorry not a song for you just for you and yeah I'm trying not to be distracted um but we had to wait. Uh, she's singing from the album Just For You. And again, there's an album where most of the songs were produced and written by Babyface. Okay? I love this album. Okay? I really do love this album. Now, see, this is the bound edition. I don't want... Oh, look at that. We got a PDF. Uh, title and publication search operation example, blah, blah, blah. We're going to trust it because it's gov info. Maybe next time. Now, oh, I'm sorry. We need to let you guys know something because you guys are not aware of something. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you us to understand something, okay? What we're going to do, um, this is Tevin Campbell in my background. He's singing a song, Just Begun to Grow. Let's make sure that's the title. Oh, no, don't throw your life away. Sorry, Just Begun to Grow is another song on his album. Let's see. We're going to go. Uh, no, that's not it either. Let's see. It's right here. Don't throw your life away. Nope, that's not it either. I'm looking for the SACOM website, and I don't see it. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have to pull up a SACOM website so that you guys can see it. S A T and let's go to PDF. Okay. And see, because that right there, it should take me right there, but it doesn't. Which is what pisses people off. Like me. Me, 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 me. Very pissed now. Okay. Because Google wants you to see the advertisement on its site. It wants you to be distracted by going every place other than where you were originally intending to go. Okay. Hey, oh, there it is. I didn't see, I haven't been able to get the picture to show up in the background. So I'm glad it actually showed up. So don't throw your life away, people. That's what Tevin Campbell was saying. Now I want you guys to watch this, okay? I'm gonna put statute. S-T-A-T-U-T-E. Should I say, I think it's the statute. So. T H E. Uh, no. Applies to fifty of the United States states, the United States Courts of America, whatever states of America. Uh, public law, no administrative law, uniform. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just looking. This, this is not what I need because we got to get it a different way. Watch this. See, because of what I did, let's see if I can paste. Let's do plain text. Nope, that ain't it either. Got to go. Uh, plain text. Plain text. Plain text. Let's do... I'm trying to do the title, but we can't. So watch this. I'm going to get rid of, for my sake, not for yours. You guys don't have to do this because you'll be able to find it. It really is simple for you. I just need you to know that it's there. So you're going to go to the satcom 911com forward slash PDF, and then you're going to do Control F. I wish the other one would let you do folders, but what we're going to do is S-T-A-T-U-T-E, the statute. Do you see that right there? There's a folder called the statute. When you click on that folder, these are the documents. Errors in the U.S. Code, United States Code Service. These are the documents where you can begin your research to prove that the code is illegal. It is not accurate. That's why they call it prima facie evidence, because under their law, presumption of law, the code is prima facie evidence. It's not evidence. It's just prima facie. Statutes are prima facie evidence of no law. Trust me. Watch this. Sorry, got to put my E back. Yeah, let's do of law. Yeah. So don't give up and believe in. No, 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 no. It didn't like my quotes, y'all. Okay, no. A non-positive law titled of the code is prima facie evidence of the statute it contains. See, prima facie evidence of the statutes. The code is prima facie evidence of the statute. Notice this. This is coming from the U-House, the United States Code Service at the house.gov. This is Congress. Pay attention. The code is prima facie evidence of statutes. Okay, the statutes are supposed to be prima facie evidence of the supreme law of the land. Watch this. Oh, there it is right there. It already knew what I was going to say. Because Google got that algorithm that's AI. Hey, anybody ever touched a four-leaf clover? Well, this is Atlantic Star, and they're, they're, they're trying to get in contact with you, telling you to leave that stuff alone. Okay? Okay. An example of this would be the use of the term prima facie evidence. Well, example of what? The plaintiff proposed, possesses the land and did not consent. No, we're not going to talk about that prima facie evidence, but I think I know exactly where that's going. And I think some of you who have land need to understand that right there. So I would go to the so-called Cornell Law and look up this right here. Just type in what I typed in. Statutes are prima facie evidence of supreme law. Well, let's find out what the page is. But those of you who own land, if you want to rely on prima facie evidence and the definition of prima facie evidence, if you own land, there are certain things you must do with your property that you have not done. If you want to understand how to secure your property, we'll be doing videos in the future, but if you want to understand how to secure your property, ladies and gentlemen, go back and listen to Mr. Rob Ryder. Yes, yes, yes. Rob, 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 Rob Ryder. Okay. I don't, you know, I don't know how Rob actually spells his name. But Rob Ryder did a video, and I think it was about 2012, called Accept the Deed, Become the Owner. Accept the Deed, Become the Owner. Now, I'm going to let you know, Rob, like myself, shows you where he's getting his information. Well, while Rob was showing you where he got his information, I was utilizing Rob's information while he was showing it because I didn't need to 
have no confirmation that what he was showing me was what he was showing me. And so you know what I did? Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, I went ahead and I, I secured my property. Okay? Because he was right. That certain things had to be done. You have to acknowledge and accept the property. If you haven't done that, if there's no acknowledgement and no acceptance, uh, uh, uh. I just talked with somebody last night and he was telling me about how in certain states there are certain laws in the books that certain things have to happen when you get a property. Well, yes, I'm aware of this because it's in the closing documents. But the fact is, these things are never placed on the record. Pay attention. The county recorder only has prima facie evidence that they place on the record. Just that simple. Prima facie. So, ladies and gentlemen, prima facie may be used and is an adjective meaning sufficient to establish a fact or raise a presumption unless disproved or rebutted. Wait, hold on. You can only raise a presumption afterwards, not before. See, if I challenge your jurisdiction, if I come in already killing presumptions, now it's your job to overcome my damage that I've already done. Okay? Prima facie valid. Yeah, whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to suggest, we have this on our laws you didn't know. We have presumption of law, but we have it from Article 3 because that's where Congress in its annotated cases stated that they were relying on presumption of law. Okay? See, the defendant had the intent to invade the land. The defendant invaded the land. The plaintiff possessed the land and did not consent to the defendant's invasion. Ladies and gentlemen, it's because of presumption of law that if you don't have a, and I have these signs all around my property, do not trespass, private property, and penal code 602.8 for California, and code 25 CFR 11.411 for federal. Those are the do not trespass codes. If you don't have the do not trespass codes on your do not trespass signs, then your do not trespass is a presumption that it's not applying to the person who's actually doing the trespassing. Even if that person was on your property, you do not have a right to shoot them. You do not have a right to harm them. The only reason why it's allowed, because some of you end up running into stupid so-called thieves who come on your property and don't know what the law is, okay? They can only be arrested if you gave them notice to get off your property. Just the sign doesn't do. You have to actually have the code because the law requires specificity. You don't believe me? Go to any business and look at how detailed their do not trespass signs are. My license ain't going to expire soon. Uh-oh. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. While this video is playing, I got to take the battery out <laughs> because it'll wear down my generator. I forgot to do that the other day and cost me a couple of good hours. And I can't have that. So got to take that battery out. Is killing me. Ladies and gentlemen, the original group who did this was the OJs. But then Eddie Levert and Gerald Levert did an album and they redid this song. And I like their version of the remake. But don't get me wrong, you got your hooks in me? Good song. Good song. Wow. Wee! You questioned me about it. Baby. Me. I I swear I just don't know what to do. Just ain't true. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> no matter set forth in the edition of the Code of Laws of the United States current, any established prima facie. Okay. Yeah, this is where the code. And we have to read this because we're going to be talking about this in a moment. So I'm actually glad that it actually showed up. Ladies and gentlemen, the code is supplemented. The code supplements as evidence of laws of the United States and the District of Columbia. Citation of codes and supplements. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. The code supplements, supplants. 
What? No, no, no. This is not that stuff you put in your body. Uh-uh. Hold on. Let's let's look up the definition of supplements. Now, we're going to do the legal definition, but we're going to do both, the English and legal definition. Oh, God. Nobody wants no geographical location. Lord have mercy. See, dietary supplement. Uh-uh. We don't want that type of supplements. Hold on. L E G A L D E F I N I T I O N. And we go. Come on. Legal definition for supplements. Referring to anything that is added to complete something, particularly a document such as a supplemental brief or supplemental declaration or supplemental complaint or supplemental answer or supplemental claim. Ladies and gentlemen. That's how it's done in law. But let me tell you something. The code could not complete the statute at large because that would mean that the statute at large is incomplete, which means it is not law. Uh, by the way, let me ask you a question. Where in the law did it give them the authority to make a code that supplements the law? Okay. See, then it wants to do dietary Oh, God. God, pull me hanging on a string. Okay? I must fight this pain. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Love this song, too, y'all. We got me through a lot of, lot of traveling on the highway, y'all. Just me and this song on the highway. Do things that you do. Okay. The way that you do. The way you, the way you call my name. I like it. Oh, baby. Pay attention. In all courts, tribunals, and public offices of the United States, at home or abroad, of the District of Columbia, and of each state, territory, and insular possession of the United States, United States Code, the matter set forth in the addition of the Code of Laws of the United States, current at any time, shall together, together, together with the then current supplement, if any, establish prima facie the laws of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, prima facie, that's the problem. There is no such thing as prima facie in law. The law is based on facts. The law is based on conclusions. But however, I need you guys to understand something. This is how they are proceeding, okay? It says, prima facie laws of the United States, general and permanent in their nature, in force on the day of preceding the commencement of the session following the last session of legislature, which is included, provided, however, provided, however, uh oh, there's an exception, provided, however, ladies and gentlemen, you guys don't understand. This is flash dance what a feeling this is by irene Kerr. you guys may not understand this song either this is the song that was playing when i got the news that my father died see both songs coming on same day during the same video and it's on um this is on a random setting both my father and my best friend died on Sundays. Today is Sunday. I don't do the coincidence thing. I don't look at this as a coincidence, but this type of stuff has been on my mind for the last week as I've been telling people. Because on the 5th of July, which was last Monday, was the anniversary of my father's death. And so without me wanting it to be on my mind, each time during this time of year, I go through my little periods of reflection. And so to have this song by Irene Cara, very good artist, okay, to have her in the background, hey, it enhances the value of these videos. Okay, let's continue. Provided, however, that whenever titles of such code shall have been enacted into positive law, the text thereof shall be legal evidence of the laws therein contained 
and in all the courts of the United States, and there are several states and territories and insular possessions of the United States. Hold on, everybody. Whenever the titles of such codes shall have been enacted into positive law. Ladies and gentlemen, they can't be enacted into positive law. Let's go back and have that discussion now, shall we? Because that's the important part. Whenever they shall have been enacted into positive law. Okay. Remember, that we're in the Twilight Zone. Oh, Lord, I've seen the Twilight Zone. Oh, man, I just love me some Twilight Zone. Come to think about it, I'll probably be watching a couple of episodes of the new Twilight Zone today. Ladies and gentlemen, it says the period of which the statute will not be repealed and the code would not be positive law. Well, what period is that? The Senate was more cautious than its committee and insisted that the code would only be prima facie evidence of law. That's what we just read. Okay? That's why we went there. Is because the Senate said it would only be prima facie evidence of law. That's what we just read. It's only prima facie evidence of law. The code is not law. So it should not be relied upon as law. If you're going to rely upon it, put the law from which it stems there in the first instance. Other than that, it's not law. And that is what was enacted. A code that, let's do this. Let, let's see if they see the same thing I'm seeing purported to cover all the general and permanent laws then in effect, but allowed for the possibility of errors and omission to be resolved by resort of statutes at large. Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, the statute at large are not the laws of the United States. The laws of the United States is the Constitution. I mean, that's the law. Everybody knows that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. That's why I first started off with that. So where are we getting this statute at large thing? What, where, where is the statute at large stuff coming from? Don't worry about it. In retrospect, it appears that the Senate's caution was well placed. In 1928, pay attention. In 1928, the legislative reference service of the Library of Congress prepared a list of several hundred provisions of permanent law that had been left out of the United States Code. Several hundred provisions of permanent law that had been left out of the United States Code. Wait a minute, why would they leave laws out of the United States Code? There's 50 different codes, so why would they leave anything out? You would think they would put everything in there, huh? Although accepting the Senate's requirements that the code is only prima facie evidence of law, Representative Roy, Roy Fitzgerald, y'all, y'all remember Roy Fitzgerald, he was the chairman of the House Committee, the revising of the laws, he said, he hoped that either originally or unofficially, uh, or officially or unofficially, sorry, if times showed that this work can be relied upon, can be relied upon, can be relied upon, then it means it can't be relied upon, that means it needs to be supported by something else. It would become more and more the exemplification of the laws of the United States. Perhaps one day, Congress would be able to pass an act that will cause the code officially to supersede and positively repeal all other legislation. Ladies and gentlemen, stop using the U.S. Code. Congress has told you that it's own prima facie evidence. That evidence cannot be supported by any law. Because, as I say, statute at large is not law. Statute at large is not law. There's no provision in the Constitution for the statutes at large. Congress cannot make law which abridges the rights of the people. The courts don't follow statute at large. However, if you're going to bring a law, bring the statute at large. Don't bring the junk that they're talking about. Now, Fitzgerald said that he and his committee had also other ambitions. What other ambitions could you have? You're a congressman. Why are you having ambitions? They hope to present from time to time different titles of this code with real revisions so that the obsolete matter may be cut out and the law may be stated trustly and clearly. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the problem. There are too many codes, too many laws. Each title has so many different sections. 
They can't just revise one section without covering the entire section. Then they would have to go back to the original intent of Congress and the original committee notes and so forth. So they cannot rely on that junk. Why? Because it's only prima facie evidence. Why? Because they found over 600 errors. The individual who brings forth the code of the law will have to prove that it is without error. Okay, let's do this. This is now he's the chairman of this committee. So he's the chief law person. Let's see what he says. And he says it's on the Senate floor. Without this qualification or amendment, it would have been impossible, apparently, for this bill to pass the Senate because the scope of this work is so large and the chance of errors is so great that with all of the safeguarding provisions which the House has introduced into Title I, there would still be left, in our opinion, apprehension for danger and error, even with the provisions of postponement if, excuse me, of its taking effect of June 1st, 1927, which would permit the session of Congress for the correction of the errors to intervene. Uh-oh. The Senate felt that it still was in danger from having too many great assumed responsibilities of passing the bill for it to mitigate so many problems and, and, and cause so many uh, uh, interruptions and disruptions. Oh, God, uh-uh, that it would cause, uh-uh, no, we couldn't do that. That, that. that would be junk. So, ladies and gentlemen, they still never corrected this. Go back and see that they still never corrected the code. Now, from time to time, they go back and they, well, when somebody brings it up in court, when somebody brings up an error in court, then they go back and correct it. And they make themselves, they indemnify themselves from the harm that's caused anybody as a result of their wayward code, which they relied upon. That's why they have that rule. If you rely upon a certain thing introduced by a branch of government and you are harmed by it, you cannot be penalized for such reliance on their code. That's why you have some people saying, no, you don't have to pay taxes on your personal property, and others saying you do have to pay taxes on your personal property. Why? Because someone is going off of a code or a statute or a revised statute. Can't do that. Okay? When you see the um, United States Code being placed on these websites, that's why I've been telling all of you, no one can copyright that junk. They don't have the right. They don't have the authority to copyright it. Now you know that it has all kinds of mistakes. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to go over an hour today. I went over two hours yesterday, and I could go over an hour talking about all of this because this document gives you more. It doesn't just give you this. And I am using this information right here, those comments right there, these records right here. I am using this information to show that the code is invalid. It has been invalid, will continue to be invalid. The corrections have never been corrected. By putting this into my documents, pay attention. By putting this information into my documents, what am I doing? I'm now challenging the court's jurisdiction because it relies upon this junk and it has never relied upon the actual law itself. Shame on these mother, stupid mother. I mean, I apologize, y'all. I got to reload this because it's thick. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we created that folder regarding the code. You don't have to go all over the internet looking for it. All you got to do is go to the site exactly as I showed you earlier. You can pull up the code yourself. You can see what was said. You don't have to understand all of the details of it. You just need to know that since the code is only prima facie evidence, then it is not evidence at all. See, the absence of evidence does not absolutely mean that there is no evidence. See, that's presumption of law. Okay, the absence of evidence does mean that there is no evidence. Doesn't matter if there's evidence possibly over there. There's no evidence presented here. And as long as it's not here, it may be over there, but as long as it's not here presently in front of us, then there's no evidence in front of us. Ladies and gentlemen, stop letting the courts play games with you. Stop letting it allow the prosecution to bring forth presumptions of law and not allow you to bring forth presumption of law. Stop using presumption of law. Go at these mother and let them know, uh-uh, y'all ain't playing that game with me. Your laws, those are not laws. Those statutes, statutes are not laws. Pay attention. Since statutes are prima facie evidence of law, they are not law. That's why Mr. Casey Davis, and I promise you I'm only understanding it now, I'm only understanding what Casey Davis said. Bam!
baby, yeah. That's Drew Hill, ladies and gentlemen. These are the times. Okay, watch this. Hold on. Prima. Where definition for prima facie. Well, we're going to do legal term because it's, it is a legal term. It's not a legal word. It's a legal term. Prima facie may be used as an objective meaning sufficient to establish a fact, sufficient to establish a fact, or to raise a presumption unless disproved or rebutted. How do you re disprove it? By bringing up the Senate notes, saying that these are not laws and they're not to be relied on as laws, that they are mistakes. And this is the twilight period. The twilight period hasn't been ended, okay? And there is no documentation anywhere that it has been ended. Because it's prima facie, because it's not actual evidence, but presumed evidence, then it is not law. Okay, the prima facie case prevented the grand jury. Nobody's supposed to be presenting a prima facie case to the grand jury. Juries, there's nothing in the law that says a jury is supposed to hear prima facie evidence. The prima facie, uh-uh. The jury's supposed to actually hear evidence. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this song right here is by Naughty by Nature. Y'all remember Tretch from Naughty by Nature? This is Tretch, everyone. Naughty by Nature. He's the same one, OPP. Okay? That's that's Tretch. But Naughty by Nature. Because <laughs> they were naughty. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want y'all to get it twisted. Ain't no cursing in none of my raps here because I'm not allowing it. But the other thing is, I listen to rap. If you guys don't like rap, I don't like rap either. That junk that they have today, that's not rap. That don't sound nothing like this, okay? No, I am old school rap because that's rap, the way it started. This junk now is just a bunch of words being put together to make themselves sound good. But... Mr. Naughty, Mr. Tretch, by nature, they, uh, anyway, we're not going to go over that. There's no reason to. Let's get back to prima facie, if you guys don't mind. The fact that prima facie doesn't mean factual. The fact that prima facie does not mean that it is actually right there in front of anybody. The fact that prima facie is based on supposition. Suppose. Oh, I suppose. Okay. But no actual facts are present. And it is not law. The code could not be prima facie. Okay, watch this. Watch this. U S C O D E is not. I don't want to. Let's let's do this. P O S I T I V E. Positive law. So why? That's why no positive law title of the code is an editorial compilation of federal statutes. Non-positive law titles are prima facie evidence of law, but positive law titles constitute legal evidence of the law of all federal and state courts. See, this is that same code, but pay attention. No positive law and positive law. Neither one of them are law. They're only positive laws are only prima facie. So please do not go off of positive law. Positive law titles, titles. Positive law titles. It does not say anything about positive law. It says titles. What's the title of the code? That's all they're saying is that the title is prima facie evidence. Go back and read it. Positive law titles? Lord have mercy. Ain't nobody asking about no title. We're talking about the actual code. Okay. What titles of the code are positive law? What titles of the U.S. Code are positive law? The titles may be positive law, but the code itself is not. Okay? Watch this. It's U.S. Code law. The U.S. Code is the actual law that Congress enacted, and it is also the legal evidence of law. Further, the section of the U.S. Code where Congress enacted the underlying statute before the applicable title became positive law there is no longer any non-repealed statutes to which to refer. Ladies and gentlemen, that's junk. 
the code is not positive law. Only the title is positive law. Go back and read. Okay, let, no, no. I don't think some people stay to the end of the videos. The code is not positive law. The non-positive law titles, the non-positive law titles are prima facie evidence, but positive law titles, not codes, titles, titles, what is a positive law title? Hold on. Hold on. Let's do that. What is a positive law title? See, the code itself, positive law title of the code is itself a federal statute. A non-positive law title of the code is an editorial compilation of federal statute. Yeah, whatever. Positive law title of the code. So what's the title of a code? Well, let's go to an actual code. List the positive law titles. Hold on. Because I just need y'all to see what a positive law title is. No, that's the end of that uh, Naughty by Nature. We got Patty LaBelle. And she wants to talk about love, y'all. We're going to let her talk about love, okay? Patty, could you come and talk to us? United States Code. List of positive law titles. Okay? Yeah. Give me one second, y'all. That's my girl, Patty, y'all. And this is Patty LaBelle. And this is her talking about love. Love, love. Okay. Thank you, Patty. Now, we're going to put this in that folder as well, ladies and gentlemen, because we don't want any of you guys to misunderstand what we're doing. And I definitely don't want you to misunderstand what we're doing because there's something else you need to understand. There is another document from the uh, state of Michigan or Minnesota University that's in there as well. And that document ladies and gentlemen, does the same as this one, but it's from the law journal of the college. Uh, Beyond the balance, no, not that one. Errors in the U.S. Code Service. It's one of these two, okay? But we're putting this information on the internet for you, okay? So that you can go ahead and kill this whole presumption issue. Now, if you guys pay attention, I've been trying to yell and scream this out for quite some time. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention so that you get it. This is the positive law. Ladies and gentlemen, not revised, codified, or enacted in the positive law. Only this is the positive law. Only this is the positive law. Whatever's in there, okay, this is not enacted in the positive law. Impossible. Do you know why? Because, pay attention, this is the law. That's positive. This right here. Pay attention. Okay. Uh, now, revised, codified, and enacted in the positive law on June 25th, 1948. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if only you guys knew how there's no way in the world Title 18 is positive law. Okay. There is no way in the world Title 18 is positive law because I want to show you just so that you can understand it better. Oh, we ain't got to go there. We got to go here. Non-positive law titles and positive law titles. That's the only thing. These are only prima facie evidence of law. Positive law titles. See? We're talking about codification. The code is not law. Okay, the title is only evidence of positive law. And that's all it is. Okay, this is the Senate. Okay, so this is them saying this. This current recently completed positive law codification projects. Okay, here's the problem. You see, they're saying that these are all completed. 
Positive Law Projects, ladies and gentlemen, only the code. Positive Law Codification, only the title to the code is Positive Law. Because remember, the statute at large is still the statute at large. If that's the law that they're relying on, if that's just the codification of the statute at large, statute at large remains the statute at large. So the code still hasn't been corrected because they cannot determine that there are no mistakes. Just the way it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, some of you guys are not going to understand this, but those of you who have been dealing with law and understanding law will understand this. What I am telling you so that you get it, because some of you still won't get it, no matter how much I sing the song, we're going to save this right here. We're going to save this right here. That's what I'm singing that song. Mary, Mary. She's going to talk about love, y'all. And get married. Oh, I already did it. <laughs> Just had to make sure because I got to upload it. So by the time this video completes uploading, this will be online. That time it will be. That's why while I'm doing this video, I've already shown you guys that this is already up. So the folder is already up there. Now I need to add this last file to this so that you can have your research. Can't find a lot of information on it, but you'll have this to have the basis for it. How it all got started, what's going on, what's been happening. Okay. There you go. Gotta go. Y'all take care of yourselves. Thank y'all for letting me, Mary, and you know the homies and from down and around the way bring this to y'all. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>